on a, a, a completely separate scale. Hi. A scale of wars. Hey. Hi, Brock. Hi. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm a little bit drained, but I will I will recover. How are you guys? Good. I'm happy. Why is there so much sound? There's a lot of shit on sweet screens. Dirty as fuck. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah? Yeah. So are you in the boat? No, I'm back in Victoria for now. Oh. And then I'm going to Duncan tomorrow or tonight. And then tomorrow I'm going back to Cortez. And then I'm going to bring Lindsay with me. Um, yeah. What would you like? Hmm? What would you like? Hey, okay, let me turn my volume up. What? Yeah, that's better. What would you like here? What do you mean, what would I like here? Kind of what, what are you creating, I guess, in your life, in your, in your experience? I am trying to create a tiny home on a lifeboat um, on a small island while also renovating a trailer, while also creating a permaculture garden, while also creating an art studio, while also immersing myself in a really small community and learning how to live kind of off the grid and away from society. Okay, we can do that. We can, we can I, that's a lot of details. Do you hold the space for the details? But uh, um, I totally, uh, you know, I love you. You're a great friend. And uh, I think that's the most important piece. Yay, oh, I love you too. How much, space, guys, how, much space, how much space do you need? Um, I think I need more space than I give myself credit for. Like that? Yeah. Like that much? Yeah. We can do that, easy. Yay. And you want to tighten that? Not too hard? You tell no, me. That's not, perfect. That's perfect? Yeah. Okay, we'll keep that light. Okay. <clears throat> What are you guys up to? We're framing the very secret plan to put together all the maps at once so we can take over the world. Take over the kitties. Kitty pop. Well. So what does the secret agent uh, Brooke Bond have to report? I'm scared. I'm moving. <laughs> but that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> what are you scared of? I'm scared of going from the biggest city on Vancouver Island to a very small secluded Gulf Island. And why is that scary? Um, because I have to like relearn how to live uh, in a lot of different ways. I feel like I've been living in a very luxurious state where everything's kind of at my fingertips, but it's kind of going to a state of like chop, chop the wood and bring the water, which is returning back to like natural old school style. Yeah. But I've been spoiled. It's a lot of work, right? It is a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. And it's not quite as comfortable. It's not quite as comfortable. And it's also sharing a very small space with two other people. Wow. <laughs> because the boat is 400 square foot. And then that's with three other people. Or three people. Um... That's so cool. I yeah. love it. We're, we're glitching quite a bit. You don't mind the, uh, or do you do you actually like that? I like it. You like it? Okay. I'm gonna just uh, wherever you want. I'm gonna get a background too. It's more fun. I only have one background. It's the fairies. Okay, you're on the light. It's pretty, there you go. It's pretty delicate, but I trust that you're that you're in good accord. I'm being absorbed at fairy bounds. Wow. So I, I have 
I'm going into a very big project, and I think it's one of the biggest projects that I've ever done. Yeah. <clears throat> because these boats, this boat is full of stuff. So we got to move all the stuff. And then we have to renovate the entire boat into a livable boat and then paint the boat and then yeah kind of build build a home on the water have you ever done any kind of work like that no and i've always wanted to and it, it's funny here like everything i've talked about in the last year is now happening I, I, <laughs> and everything i wanted is is just getting out of my fingertips that's so I'm happened. grateful, but I don't know how to process it. I just do the fold. Yeah, I just do the fold. You know, it just requires laughter and play. And you're so good at that, yeah. that it's just kind of guaranteed that, you know, for you, for you to, like, I want you to, I want you to experience um, your celebration. I want to experience your celebration in, in the most delightful way. Like your laugh is just so special and I care about you and your happiness. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a nice little muzzle of fun. I don't know, truth, Destiny. Today, our primary intention is how to create the experience of our dreams through the inflow matrix. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so we're totally on that accord. We're basically cutting that. lots of stuff. Wow, that's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, too. I was having a conversation with Nigel yesterday, and he was saying, just because you dreamed it doesn't mean that it's actually true. There's lots of things that I dream, but I was like, no, dreaming, <laughs> dreaming is some part of my subconscious that's important. And so I'm glad you guys are shining light on that more. Yeah. yeah it's becoming a playground of peace and safety. And the security feature is like divine. Um, and that is, um, that's the value that I think I've been most excited about is uh, I haven't been, I haven't been able to sleep at night without um, the security feature being kind of a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, and now that uh, I'm experiencing that, um, the the reciprocity advance is just yeah, it's a relief in in such to such an extension that I I am so feel I feel so validated and as a as a human being you know, and, um, and excited to share that with the world. Yay. And come alive. Mm -hmm. And come home. And come home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And come back, too. <laughs> come alive, come back. Come alive and come back in a newness, in a new way. Reborn again. That sounds great. At the edge of a knife. How about? Okay. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The swirl patterns are destiny. <laughs> you know, both of you guys are yellow suns of the Mayan calendar with Joe Sarah Grizz's version? Yeah. <sighs> Just the yellow sun. Yeah. Hey, Brooke, I'm going to write something on my hand. Would you like to enunciate what it is? Yeah. OK. What would you like it to say? I don't know. Um, mm, can you draw a picture of a cat? <laughs> what about... <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. 
I don't know. No, that's beautiful. Does it look too much like a mouse? <gasps> Let me see. Oh no, it's great. It's adorable. I love you it. Love it. You love it? Yeah, it's amazing. It brings me great joy. Okay, is it complete? Yeah. Okay, I'll photo that now. <gasps> you can do it with the circle. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll actually, I'll send it over to you. <laughs> Good creation. Uh, pizza. <laughs> I have a pizza in my car. You? Yeah. I just moved him into the chair. Nice. I was carrying around in my purse with me everywhere for a bit. And putting him in my hair with a little ponytail. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, I'll do that too. I can do that too tonight. It's so good. That's fun. Yeah, it's a little guardian. My car guardian now. It's a guardian. Cardigan. Dun, 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 dun. So, how are you guys going to put dreams in the info matrix? Uh, video. About our dreams, and how they connect together to the structures of the shared maps. The maps are where they have foundation of how we structure your time. No, your yeah. audio isn't working very well. No. Wait, I can hear you better now. Well, just it's like this it's, it's, it's structuring your time so that you're doing what you want to do. And making a living doing it. I mean, most people look to get a job, and the job pays the money, and then they use that money to live somehow what they want to do. But they got to pay; they got to do eight hours of doing whatever they got to do to make that money. But mm -hmm. how do you create the lifestyle that you want, independent of the money side? Create the ideal of what you want. That's what you're doing. You're you're living your life. The, all your dreams are coming true. And it's like magic, but as you get more defined in your mind and you're around people who are in the same mindset as you, then you go towards that direction that you've designed on paper or thought in your mind or want, you know, strongly with your heart. Oh. Well, I thought you guys were using literal dreams, like using your dreams as like a, like a subconscious vision. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, that too. I mean, there's, there's lots of paths to the top of the mountain. So. Yeah. Brooke, I'm going to record this now for a little bit, if that's okay. Okay. Cool. So how can you bring your dreams? Like, does dreams, dreams through value? Like a value system? Well, when you map out your value system, you're, you're basically telling the universe sort of like the methodology of how you want to create what you want to create. So if you want to do it with integrity, if you want to do it with inspiration, if you want to do it with uh, love, those are the values that you program into your field as a, or your mindset. And then that value system attracts the experiences leading you to your lifetime goals. You got to identify what your lifetime goals are. Mm -hmm. Those are the largest, deepest, farthest points you're aiming at. You, you seven lifetime goals. I need my lifetime goals. I only have done like five year goals. I mean, it, it makes you look at again, if you're designing your ideal world, you're designing your ideal job, you're designing your ideal life. You want to set the parameters for your whole lifetime. And they, that's what the purple is on this map. 
Mm -hmm. Google is your lifetime. And so you're writing seven lifetime goals for that. So that becomes the parameters or the design constructs of what you want to happen in your life, where you're aiming at. So you can then define, is this in alignment? Does it work? Or it doesn't. It's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Kind of a good way to look at things. <laughs> kind of like that. I feel like it makes me feel less overwhelmed about my new project because I know that it's in my value system and my, my lifetime goals. Yeah. Like maybe jumping into something like that. It's not like I never want, didn't want that. Well, see, if you look at the aquamarine circle behind me, that's a lunar cycle. So you're designing there. That's where your job is. The, the green one is your activities, and that's where your actual daily actions are. And then you're one of these 20, you're the yellow sun. And then the, the pink is the hour, the orange is the minutes in the present moment, and then timelessness. And so the map is for you to design your ideal future, exactly how you want to live it. And then your mind co-creates that with other people that are using the same operating system. Mm -hmm. The new paradigm has to change. The, the change is coming in how we view time. We have to go from linear to cyclical time. Cool. <clears throat> and so this map is the main map in the inflow matrix mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that creates a thinking system for people to use to organize whatever they want to organize. But what does the yellow sun signify in the Mayan calendar? Well, you should, I mean, you should type in Jose Arguez. Mm -hmm. Uh, the dream spell and dream yellow spell. the dream spell and yellow sun and that's probably the best way of, of looking because there's a lot of information on the net right now yeah it. and I wouldn't say that I'm an, an expert I know enough to point mm, fair enough okay cool yeah I've always wanted to look into that but I haven't really found very good sources I thought I understood after. Well, there's a book called The Mayan Factor by Josie Arguez, A-R-G-U-E-L-L-E-S, The Mayan Factor. Mm. And that's that's a work of genius. It's a masterpiece. And yeah. that's, like He was like a prophet, but he was coming in with the Mayan calendar in a way that the Mayans don't, like he has some different interpretations of, of dates and timing and, and they don't agree with him. So he's, mm. so there, there's two huge philosophies that are different and the, the Mayan elders don't don't like what he did but he brought attention to the Mayan calendar to the western mind huh? like he was the guy who mapped it like he's and if you look at his books you read his books he's pure genius like he's he's one of the top 10 thinkers of the 20th century I would say huh Cool. Yeah. I started my year last year in a Mayan ceremony and I didn't even know any of this stuff. Um, <laughs> but it's good to learn. No, is changing the time with the planetary guardian charts kind of signifying different interdimensional time, time warps? Because I always feel like when I'm in my flow state, and I'm, I'm not in a third dimensional time. I'm in like a fifth or fifth dimensional time because I'm in timelessness. Yeah, that would be the center point. Mm -hmm. So to me that like you're beyond mind, beyond time, you're not thinking, you're just, you're, you're flowing in the current of the universe. <clears throat> what's, what's going on with your <laughs> I, I found this random herb under my bed. I haven't had breakfast yet, I woke up late. I'm just eating this random herb. But <clears throat> I think it's ashwagandha or calamus. I, I thought you were just reacting to what I was saying. <laughs> Time warp. <laughs> Yucky. It tastes like Alice, but ashwagandha and Alice taste the same. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like I have a lot of issues in my life with time. <laughs> well, if, if you're in that 5D a lot and you're spacing out, and other people are very in 3D linear time mode, there's a big disconnect. 
And I think that's what's happened to a lot of star seeds, crystal kids, and indigos, and people who go to 5D a lot, but they don't know they're in 5D. Or, or people who do drugs to get into 5D or whatever it is. Yeah, I find when I'm on Cortez, I feel in complete timelessness. I was just there for four days and I, I feel, I, I did not feel like it at all. I just felt like I was in this entire time warp. Every day it would take like four hours to go to the grocery store because you stop at the grocery store and then you stop at the beach and then you go for a nature hike and da 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 and suddenly it's dark. And the whole time it just felt like time was not real in that space. And every time I get there, time isn't real. I was like, what, I went and asked the guy at the store what time it was and he, or what day it was. And he didn't even know. He's working. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds lovely. It is. But then the city feels so structured. It's like, oh, meet me at this appointment at two o'clock and you're know, on the dot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what's the orange? um on it the oranges the minutes but those are also the conversation types so all those uh yeah. all the, the the condo cards the uh all the different types of conversation types go there and, and it's like you're in a conversation and it's structured in information flow different from the present moment different from like an hour which is the pink and then you just it's the path it's the path that the information is flowing down Mm. as your sense or auditory is picking it in and then as you process it so what's the blue the blue oh you're asking sneaky questions um i can't talk about that not not here not why not. is it there because it's part of the very secret plan. what a joke <laughs> <laughs> so funny. All right, what's the green? The green is the day, 24 hours in a day. So then what does the yellow signify? Yellow is seasonal. But okay. looking yeah. I think it's got its place. <laughs> it is. Seasonal is out of place. It's at the in-between point between the long term which is like lifetime, year, lunar, and day. And then short term is insight because the, 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 the yellow is actually where the people are. You're on one, you're at the yellow sun. So like each of us is in one of these spots, but we as creators are looking at seasons. We want to look at a whole season into what we're going to create versus the day when we're doing our logistics versus the whole year where you're doing your long-term resource planning. How do you look at the whole season when you're in timelessness? Well, you kind of like your season is just again looking at a point of let's say if you go January to, to March or you go between solstices. <laughs> I just broke up like an hour ago. How come whenever I'm talking, you're looking like you're about to die? Like, no, I'm just waking up. I'm just doing my like morning, like I'm I'm alive and I haven't died. Um, kind of you know, like uh today uh, kind of things. Don't 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 worry about me, I'm listening. Okay. Sorry, this, it's not the right body language. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I was doing it. Things, things. Uh, uh, no, I'm, hold on. I'm interested. Um, yeah. What is this? What are you saying? <laughs> I have to smoke a lot of air water when dealing with people. Maybe I should start smoking marijuana because I mean something. I need something. I have tobacco, but it, honestly, it's not enough. I could I could smoke a lot of it and still feel the same. And these marijuana kind of does something. Yeah, or some other types of medicines. What would you recommend? I'd recommend uh, a nice balance of uh, LSD with. Uh, MDMA with some mushrooms and some special K and uh, mm -hmm. in the right amounts. What if you're agitated? What would you recommend? Agitated? Yeah, what if you're mad? Mad? I definitely K. Okay. It just takes the edge. It just completely removes the kind of negative edge. It's amazing. It, uh, anyone who's suffering long-term depression, I think should, should try it. It'll change your life. 
I think there's a lot of people out there who are suffering from long-term depression. <laughs> You just hide it, but you take it. But at some point, it's, it's how can you watch this world be ravaged and be, you know, not affected by it? I don't know. I, I feel like when I'm on that small island, I don't watch anything. I just watch the birds and the sunset. Oh, fuck. I need to do that. I'm watching stupid Facebook videos and all the conspiracy things and all the bad things going on, on the planet. It drives me nuts. I got really into that. I was on my Telegram. I would have like, 300 messages a night i would just lie in bed and go like oh this is happening this and this and this and uh, you know i'm better off without it i'm better off le learning more about this chart and how i can <clears throat> influence people's lives with their value system and their seasons and their goals and their conversations and i'm getting dings um <laughs> then feeding into some kind of entity that isn't serving my reality or changing it really. Well, they, but wait, do you know that they they served an injunction at the at the old growth blockade? <clears throat> so oh, now, I didn't know that. Yeah, so now the that means the cops are coming, people going to jail, and that place is going to get clear cut. Well, everyone I know that was there got kicked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> all of power to them. <laughs> <laughs> everyone <laughs> i saw my friend last week i was like oh you're not at fairy creek anymore what happened i don't want to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> he's like I, maybe i talk about it tomorrow but i can't talk about it tonight i don't want to talk about it at all and then he just kind of got sad but like i'm like <laughs> Gotta stop. Gotta stop. I think I think K is really bad for arguments. So yeah. I think if you're gonna have a discussion or a debate with someone and you're on K and they're not, you become a fucking asshole. All my relations. <laughs> Nigel and me tried to have like this counselor, like psychological, like um conflict resolution, but I didn't know that he had done a bunch of K before he came and sat with me. <laughs> And he just he just went full counselor like he was sitting there. Like, I know the theories of the universe, and I have it all figured out. And I I have this entire map that's explained, and everything's pouring in. And I was just sitting there like this is this isn't what we're talking about. <laughs> he took the K to get ahead. Huh. Yeah, and he just went full counselor he was like emotional body logical body this you're he's like you're coming at a state from emotional right now and he was just just so zombie like in cave world <laughs> that he was just he was just straight there and then i was just everywhere and he was he was everywhere in different dimensions but not anywhere in my dimension <laughs> and he thought he knew fucking everything that's what kind of he does I think you know everything. <laughs> he smashed my phone, and then I, I tell him, you know, don't you ever try to have a conflict resolution with me. Hi, I'm Ketamine again. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's like the wonder drug. Yeah. So yep. how are things going with Planetary Guardian stuff? Planetary Guardians is, uh, well, I sent out that thing. I sent out something this morning. It was, I, I've been focusing on mostly like website stuff and the choose remedy stuff. But today, today I sent a, the video that I took of uh, Will. I made a nice video of, of, of Will recounting his story. Mm -hmm. And it, it tells the whole story of how it starts and what happened. And it's, it's a great beginning to get to understand what's going on. Whoa. So I sent it out to 50 people uh, on Facebook and they usually ignore me and don't share anything I send them and don't respond. So that's what I'm expecting, but maybe this time will be different. Can you send me a link to it? You're on it. <laughs> <laughs> I linked you. I, I put your name. Did you link it today? I mean, I've been off all day. <laughs> well, the obviously. first kind of thing that I've actually done today <laughs> is have a Zoom call. Um, I don't think I got it. No. When did you send it? Uh, a couple hours ago. No, what I didn't one? get it. Oh, huh. sure. 
¿Ya? Have you talked to Lara in a while? No, I gotta see her next time I'm in Duncan. She she was evicted. Her the bailiff came in and took all her stuff, and actually moved her for her. Moved all her stuff to a, a some one of her friends' places. So she has been moved. Wow. So it looks like people are moving whether they like it or not. I don't even have to move. That's the thing. That's the thing that bothers me is I have no obligation to move aside from the fact that I've been wanting to move and talking about moving and now I have everything I ask for in front of me. Do you really want to move? I don't know. See, I am I was on this trailer for four days and the back of the trailer was rotting and there might be black mold under it. And then in the front, I mean, there's a kitchen that works, but if you walk too far, you might fall through the floor. And then there's a couch and there's Sean on the couch and then there's me and Nigel in the hide of bed. And then I guess Nigel's idea was he didn't want to third, he didn't want Sean to third wheel with me and him. So instead he just became really buddy buddy with Sean. So I started third wheeling with them. And then um, I was like, there's no relationship stuff here. Like I'm I, like, they should be, they should be dating at this rate. And that was his, his really good logic. Um, and then um, I spent four days and then the lifeboat that we were supposed to, there's two lifeboats and one of them they bought. And then one of them, there was this girl staying on who's this really cool artist who actually works for youth and is like the, um, one of the organizers for like youth um, courses and stuff in Nanaimo. So she's like one of the high up there people. She's having like um, conference calls with the city of Nanaimo and like organizing things for youth. And then, um, so she's there. So that's a cool connection um, in a lot of ways. And then also there's this other guy there who was talking about changing the paradigm to a, like to a system of money system of love which was interesting. Um, so they out there, uh, <laughs> um, but the lifeboat that we're supposed to be staying on is full of stuff. And then there's this girl staying in the one that isn't full of stuff. So then we had nowhere to move the stuff. And then this girl was staying there. So it was all of us in this trailer. And then the person that's selling the boat is a good friend of mine that I've known for like six years now. Um, but he's an older fellow who used to own an antique, sh antique shop. So then a lot of the stuff is just full of antique collectibles and a bunch of stuff. So then it's like this whole orbit where I was just, and this girl was always busy doing her youth stuff. So I was in this whole orbit of older men. And, and I was just, I was screeching for feminine energy. And I then Nigel was being buddy buddy with Sean because he wanted to exclude him. So I didn't know where to run. And then I'd go and hang out. The only places I had to hang out was like this boat with this like other, other dude and this trailer with these other dudes. And this the masculine thinking. I need, I need to start making YouTube videos about the feminine and the masculine thinking because they are so polar opposite in so many ways that it's almost insane. It is, it's insane. And if you can find a way to have a duality of both of that, which a lot of people don't, maybe they do if they focus on that, but a lot of people just generally societal don't have that. Like I was trying to explain it to Nigel. I'm like, a guy, a man sees a phone. Like I, I see a, like the background, the thing, what's over there, what's on that, what's the weather like on the window, where's the phone, the phone's on the bed, Where, what kind of phone is it, da 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 da. And I, I feel like everyone was just like, I see thing, thing there. And it was just like, I was seeing this whole world and I was like, what role do I play? Because I feel like, I don't know. So I don't know if I can live in a trailer with three, <laughs> two other men. Aren't, aren't there other females on the island? Can't you uh, connect into the rest of the community? Well, it's it's a COVID winter on a small secluded island. It's not like everyone's going to be like, hey, girl, what's up? Come over for dinner. <laughs> well, there's got to be some people in your network that know people there that are, are tapped in. I know people there, but then I realized that everyone I know there is mad. <laughs> are, they're all crazy? Well, that's good. That's well, no, good. they're all mad. Oh, they're all men. Oh, yeah. they're all men. Well, I know what I know one. I well, actually, no, I have four, four females, but I, I'm still yet to find anyone in my age range. Right. Like the two females that I know there that I've spent time with are like in their 40s to 50s. 
And then another one of my friends there just had a baby. So she's, you know, Cortez does something to you. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I, I need to, I had a really good friend of mine from Salt Spring that was staying there. Last time I was there, it was a female. And so every time that I was there, we just hang out every single day. And then I got back there and she wasn't there and I was hanging out every single day with men. Um, yeah. Well, could you kind of like, maybe like circulate two weeks there, two weeks back somewhere else in Duncan or something? And kind of like go back and forth? I think I'm gonna get a camper van and convert it. Um, probably get my full license and then have a space that's completely entirely like a safe home for me that I can take anywhere. And yeah. then I can go connect with everyone everywhere. Right. And then have that as a home base because I don't have to pay rent there. So I'd be saving and I'd be saving a lot of money and then I could do what I want to do, but have like a nook to come back to. Right. That sounds good. <clears throat> yeah. And you always have Zoom. Always have Zoom. Well, wait, are you on the boat right now? Where are you right now? I'm back in oh, the you're home. You're home. Yeah. For us. I'm for for a day, I guess. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I feel like I have to go into other things. It's a good talking with you. Yeah. Jordino, Dino, did you want to say anything to, to end it? Uh, it's very nice to you on the line and uh, quite the art. Me? All of us. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you later. Goodbye. Alligator. <laughs>